What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I'm Noah Ruiz, the designer here. Joining me is Pedro Ruiz, my brother. What's up, dude? What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, the creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D printing projects, designs, CAD tips, and of course, electronics featuring Adafruit components. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics. We smash them together and design things. <laughs> Very we, cool show today, though. A lot of cool projects. Inspiring you guys to do very cool projects. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Oh, OK. All right, well, every week, we have a lovely summer of segments. We start off with, of course, our coupon code for this week. That's right. What is it this week? Fusion 5 3D. It'll get you 10% off of any 3D printing accessory filament and, of course, electronics to bring projects to life. Okay. Spiders at 11.59 PM tonight. It only works on uh, um, bits, not, or no, I'm sorry, atoms, not bits. Hey, that's my usually what I mess <laughs> up on. Yeah, so it doesn't work on gift certificates or software. Okay, but everything else. All right, folks, let's start off with uh, our segments. We're going to start it off with what are you prototyping? That's when we take a peek at behind the scenes of some upcoming projects for a future episode. We'll dive into our layer by layer segment. That's right. That's when we take a look at some of the techniques that we used to create the projects. Okie doke. And then 3D news. Every week we scour the net for some interesting stories from the community to bring to you guys. Shop talk. Shop talk is when we talk about pretty much like a, almost like a layer by layer this week. We talk about some ongoings. Yeah, okay. And then we got a small Q&A folks right. answering your YouTube questions. All that and more on 3D Hangouts. That's right. So let's start off with what are you prototyping? You know, last week, we had a chess set, and <laughs> that's good. That's funny <laughs> as hell. <laughs> what are you prototyping <laughs> upside down? All right, so last week we had the um, chess set, and now we have finally the last character model finished. It's the beloved LEDs, which is Ruby, Gus, and Billy. Yeah, and these are pawns. These are going to be the pawns. Um, and they are some pretty interesting looking characters. They look like LEDs. They're really simple, <laughs> very cute and cartoony, a little bit quirky too. But uh, I think they're, they're going to work really well as pawns. Yeah, and you posted the tumbling technique, um, or sort of like a before and after on the Google Plus uh, community page. And everybody was interested in finding out about the... Um, yeah, so what's actually going on What's here? actually How going are on are we tumbling? tumbling? Yeah. With why, the, um, why are we using screws and steel screws? Um, so per first, maybe talk about uh, how we're using the Rep2 versus the Type A machine. You've been doing a lot of prototyping with the Type A machine, but uh, we did test out the Rep2 because there's this is a big project. Mainly, there's a lot more printing and uh, processing more than design. There's a lot of design too, but man, there's a lot of processing and finishing going on here. Yeah, so there's a lot of different pieces that actually go into this. So this is actually one, two, three, four, five different right. pieces to. Uh, to put avoid all this together. Overhanging and the best quality. It's overhanging, really nice. and then because we have to tumble these, they have to go in, in separate pieces. They'll like um, break off, and we tried printing some of these as a full part. So there's always those sort of considerations. Um, yeah. Last week you were telling uh, we were, we were going to think about ba uh, bamboo, so wood versus metal. But now you, you know, can we clearly see metal the differences. Metal. Yeah, yeah, I was afraid that it might be the same, but you can clearly see the bronze here has more of a sort of um, metal sort of look, and the copper fill has more of like a rose gold sort of shine to it. So you can mm -hmm. definitely tell these apart when you're doing when you're playing, and you can see you know the and one of the things shine on this. yeah one of the things that we notice is because it looks so similar is because the medium actually degrades over time. Um, as you use your, your brass screws, for example, on copper parts, more and more, you're going to get less and less of a finish, uh, mainly because, well, what's going on with the brass screws is that a lot of the, the, the brass golden flakes are being, uh, you know, kind of impregnated into the material. Yeah. So that's what gives it that brilliant shine. And you discovered over time it kind of oxidates, too. Yeah, so you can see um, a comparison a of something that just came out of the tumble, which is the tumbler. You can clear this see. one, this and then one from last week when we showed off. Yeah, I hope uh, the reflectivity clean. remains, though. 
um, because you can really see the highlights there. It's you can so almost shiny. see yourself. You can see like reflections yeah. in this. Let's see if you can focus up on that. So, so back to the the community, the three D printing community on Google Plus. A lot of a lot of people are really interested, and, and somebody mentioned um, had a really good comment um, saying that because the the steel has these little edges and they're really sharp. It's really good at getting uh, the nitty gritty stuff. It's a good job of abrasion too. So that's really what you want here. Mm -hmm. um, when you're looking at commercial tumbling stuff, you know we saw barnacles, uh, you know, doing this type of stuff that you would use on, on rocks and gems. Yeah. That stuff's not so good. It's like resin bound abrasive, right? Um, so steels is actually steel nails, washers, whatever metal. It's actually a really cost effective way, and it's you know uniform. So it's uh, it does a good job at tumbling stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't think um, something that would give it such a brilliant shine, but yeah, there you and, go. and really where we got this idea was from 3D Universe. This is a channel on uh, a channel on YouTube, and uh, this, this 3D Universe put it together, um, but we couldn't find the video again. So luckily, we had this video saved uh, from and we December actually of showed last this year. Yeah. We shared it last year, and not many people are aware that uh, that you could do this, you know, so easily. So he had some parts that he printed in copper fill and bronze fill. Yeah, so um, he and actually he, used a very old here? school sort of tumbler. I think like <laughs> a lot of kids had back kids in the day. I remember this one, yeah. Um, and I think you even ordered this one too. You were turning around, playing around with it before you got the industrial one from Yeah, Lord this one Tone. totally burned out. If you're it's burned out on it's, it's not even. Don't worth recommend it. it. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's why you took the video down. But yeah, anyway, but you, can here here. you can see that he has the the brass, just very you know various amounts of screws. He's really pro just kind of experimenting, and that's what we were doing too. And, and that's really why we made a video of it too. Um, so if you haven't already, check out the video, uh, Polishing Copper and Bronzeville. If you search on Google for you know, Polishing Copper and Bronzeville, we come up, and so does Barnacles. And I thought this video would show up, but you know, it didn't show up because it's been taken down. But if you scrub um, through yeah, it, you we can scrub through it, and you can see uh, what, what the finish looks like. And you can see that the copper stuff looks a little bit darker, not just because of the lighting, but because they're just that, the, the, the screws and mediums probably weren't that new. So these were all polished new screws. We went to Lowe's, you know, hardware store, and we bought new screws. And you really get a much nicer finish that way. Yeah, so, so over time, like you were saying, it does degrade. Yeah. We've already had to replace the, uh, the brass ones we had from before. Whoa, here we are backwards, upside down. <laughs> a little weird thing there. But uh, man, this is a very full cool project. Uh, but beyond the, uh, the board, let's talk about the board, yeah? So last week, we had it kind of halfway done. This week, it's done. Um, it is. It now has two connector pieces, much tighter tolerances. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fall apart when you pick it up. It can. It's modular. You can fold it up, and uh, all these little pieces uh, snap to the connector nubs that are uh, that are in the beams here that are cross sectioned, and uh, that way you don't have to glue anything. Everything is tolerance uh, snap fit. Man, it's really nice. Um, really nice chess board. So uh, we'll be releasing that in the coming all weeks. Pieces, yeah. Like we said. But uh, just ran out of filament here, so yeah, <laughs> waiting for another shipment to come in. Tomorrow. Because we've been prototyping a lot and <laughs> using uh, a new slicer, we've been uh, we've been able to test out a couple different uh, techniques, yeah, and we'll, we'll talk, talk about more about this. that during shop talk. But uh, that's going to be the prototyping segment. Think, Very uh, awesome little cool chess piece set here. Yeah, can we just start playing this? It's fun. Yeah, I know. Can't yeah. believe uh, something that doesn't have any electronics in it is just as difficult to make. <laughs> oh yeah, well it's just. Um, a lot of different pieces, a lot of different parts, like you're telling us. All right, next yeah. up, we have a very cool layer by layer to uh, stay on the theme oh, of yeah. our transitioning over to Fusion 360. That's right. Had a very cool one on converting your 123DX file. Guys, if you want to pick up some copper fill on the, on the shop, you totally can get yourself 10% off. Fusion Phi 3D is the coupon code, so be sure to check that out. You can, get, you can pick up some copper fill, bronze fill. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at the next segment. Let's just jump there into layer. 3D news for this week. All right, let's do that. So this week we have some very cool projects. We're going to start it off with this one here. This is Printer Bot Metal Plus Raspberry Pi Cam. It's a mount for your bed. Okay. So this is a very cool mount We've for a before, heated bed. But this is special. This is what you want to get, guys. So this is the Printerbot Plus. Yeah, so it's a little bit difficult to get time lapses on printers that have the bed moving. Beds, yeah. You're going to you know, just see all of that crazy You can get movement. it, but you're going to see your part just a big blur, especially yeah, yeah. if you have So this is definitely the way speed. to do it, to put a mount right on the bed so you can get shots like. So oh, man, yeah. So, so again, lapse. yeah, the parts printed, um, what, an ABS or PLA or something? 
I think he used ABS for this, but okay. yeah. So this is uh, by Jeremy Williams, and oh. he um, oh. used a very cool um, little mount that he designed there. Um, it mounts to the right side of that because of the you know the zero clearance that you have on the heated bed okay. um, for the PrinterBot Plus. Yeah, so it clamps right on to the right side, right underneath there. The heated bed, um, you have to use the, the bolts that are included with the bed. And very awesome shots you're able to get like this. So instead of seeing the bed move you know, back and forth, you're seeing everything else around it move. And he's using a modified Raspberry Pi cam with a fish eye lens on there to print this very cool um, Star Wars. Um, Star Destroyer. Destroyer. This is really cool. Man, I envy... I envy his bed plate. Look how perfectly straight that is, man. I wish I had a build plate that straight. Right. You're talking about the Raspberry Pi cam. So they have, the, they sell them with this uh, little lens the adapter. Eye adapter. But yeah. you can get these for like what, like a dollar fifty cents or something oh, like man. that, like on the, the, Amazon the, for the cell eBay. phones. Yeah, for like Android and iOS. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, yeah, you can pick up these. I think even Photo Jojo, right? Is it one of them uh, a little more expensive there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they got ND faders and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of different uh, lenses there, but uh, very cool. I didn't know that they had. Definitely these. need the fisheye lens when you're pretty close mm -hmm. to the bed like that. Very great very design. Awesome design. Thank you, you can pick so this up much, on Jeremy. This is very cool. You can pick this up on his Thingiverse page. We got the links in the description. Next up, we have a very cool marble machine. This is so awesome. This is from Jasmine. She was actually on the show and tell, the Adafruit show and tell. She was a guest and she showed off her DIY video skate dolly project. It was about a year ago, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this time she's coming out with a very awesome, very ambitious, massive assembly project. This is a marble machine. Yeah, so this was inspired by the, um, the little marble machine that was inside the MakerBot retail oh, the store. Rape, yeah, that, yeah. It's it's sad to, 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 you know, it's gone now, but... Now you can build your can, own. You can build your own. It lives on. Uh, yeah, cool. so uh, click on the next page there. You can see all of the uh, different parts you can get for this, like the crossovers, the loops, switches, and curves. Oh, one more back. Yeah. Yeah, and those are all the pieces. So you can totally customize this to make this, um, to make your dream sort of roller coaster sort of roller coaster. ride for your marble. marble roller coaster. <laughs> no, it's very cool, though. Um, a lot of different pieces there. Um, so not there's just some 3D dowels. printed parts, you can use some dowels and maybe some machine screws and stuff. Okay. And there's some cool little pictures of sort of the design process that she took to build a very cool, you know, sort of um, ride for this. What did she say? A design is never finished. <laughs> yeah, so she's planning on actually showcasing this at the uh, Maker Fair in Detroit. Oh, that's very awesome. So folks in check Detroit, this out in person. you'll um, see some cool on. stuff. So here's uh, sort of, you know, some of the different ways that you can sort of position all of these and sort of make you know, something crazy, you know. She's Very planning cool. on auto automating this so that oh, the man. ball will, you know, sort of be lifted up automatically. At the MakerBot awesome. store, they had like a magnet on the wall. It would yeah, like, there's a wheel too. So yeah. You would, you would, use, you would roll this yeah, wheel so cool. and it would bring up the ball, the steel ball. Okay, so this is uh, an instructable that we can check out and uh, all parts. the assembly stuff is there. All the yep. parts are on Thingiverse and uh, you can start making your very own marble machine very awesome very awesome work jasmine thank you so much please come on the show and tell if you're watching this show this off yeah check it yeah <laughs> be really cool wednesdays we'll talk more about it okay next up very awesome binary watch this is by tim uh keely uh this is uh he designed a housing to hold a binary watch circuit um the watch shows the hour minutes by flashing two leds in sequence they represent the two bit the two four-bit binary numbers, the left LED represents the zeros and the right LED represents the ones. The first set of flashes is the hour and the second set of flashes is the minute. It's a three-piece design. The pressure fits together very nicely. Um, the body and the, um, the face pieces have an oval so that you can align the parts evenly when the two pieces are um, snap fitted together. Okay. The, uh, the faces has two little tabs that help um, hold the circuit into place and it has little holes so you can add your very own strap. Very cool. He gives away the little template so you can cut out your own um, circuit to solder all the pieces onto. He has a cool little video too okay. of the assembly of that. Very awesome. You have the little. Um, How's he powering the, it? The uh, coin cell that goes into the back there. You oh, briefly okay. saw it. I think we have photos of it as well yeah, too. We and uh, here it is in action. Very cool little um, circuitry yeah, uh, nice. watch. Very cool concept Very too. Awesome. Good project to take on. Yeah. Great job. You can pick this up on Thingiverse, right? Yep. All of the files are available. Looks like you used a printer bot simple. That's right. In the transparent oh, blue PLA. 
There's the battery. Cool. Very simple circuit. Awesome. All right. Next up. Next up, we have. Oops. Not that one. Form Labs. Next up, we have. Very awesome um, demonstration of new uh, tough resin by Form Labs. So this is a huge the deal. SLA, folks. Yeah, yeah, just seeing all these shots right here. Um, as we come to find out with the Ember um, uh, doing all the SLA printing, um, oh. it's become you know uh, very apparent that any sort of abrasion or having like snap together parts with you know the cases that we're able to print out of it mm -hmm. um, with SLA parts, it just turns into you know sort of powder. We start snap fitting and um, causing like friction between parts with uh, yeah. SLA print. So and it's a very cool scene. On, on thin Something stuff, like you this. get cracks too. You can actually crack it and mm -hmm. you couldn't thread it. Yeah, so their new material is very cool. Blue has the ability to have, you know, be the. To be threaded. Um, threaded. Can, um, I guess cut it without it shattering in a bunch of places. Yeah, just showing this little scene right there with the, the, the wheel that's yeah, turning you know all that's those. Friction, a lot of friction. There's a lot of friction. If that was like the regular. Um, um, resin stuff that would turn into powder immediately. Yeah. It's and interesting to see flexibility here too. Mm -hmm. So it's and a lot of strength too in this, yeah. and uh, just the ball being able to hit all those um, parts with the, the amount of Whoa. force that it's hitting is you know, the big deal. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, so very cool <laughs> new uh, type of material. It's very awesome to see that all the you know SLA um, is getting into the material fun. Um, it's a little bit more expensive for this stuff. I think it's like 170 bucks for this. Um, I think the flexible is actually one of their cheapest um, material, but it's very nice to see that uh, more materials in the SLA world. Oh yeah, very cool. Okay, so um, I wonder if this will work on uh, Ember? the Ember or any other. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if there. I don't know if you have to use different exposure times or something. Yeah. For this. We'll definitely look into this. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Next up, we have update from James Bruton. Over at X Robots. Yeah, he is X Robots. He is the X Robot. <laughs> James Bruton, if More you haven't updates. already seen, he's been working on the Hulkbuster for a year now. And now in this update, he is sort of working on upgrading the wrist here. There's a, there's a lot of work to be done on the wrist. And um, to relieve the tension, he's going to use a block and tackle approach, which is a series of pulleys. So he pulls it up on Wiki and um, pretty much models these parts in uh, 123 Design. Um, so basically, the more sort of uh, the more you wrap loop around uh, the pulleys, the more pulleys you have, the less effort it is to sort of lift something heavier. So that's the approach he's going to go here. Yeah. And um, the the tendons uh, in the in the arm that we saw are printed uh, Ninja Flex. So he's got ninja, a hybrid of Ninja Flex and ABS and then nylon uh, for those tendons. So here are the parts. Uh, they're printed on a Lulzbot Mini and an ABS. It's all assembled there. I think he's using it's just a, a steel um, sort steel of pins. rod yeah, and pin. And there it is, uh, prototyping it to see uh, how well it works out. And you can see the joints all um, bending and all the rigid parts are, are keeping the structure together. Um, so to mount it inside the part, he has two parts here, right? So it gets sort of in the upper part of the arm and then near the lower part of the arm. Um, so there it is, sort of just prototyping it with a uh, I think a screw drill, right? Yeah. And um, he hooks it up to Arduino later um, so that you can trigger it with his joystick that he has. So obviously it's, it's two arms, so he has to do it on both arms. So. Uh, but a cool thing is he's using micro switches uh, as end stop triggers. Um, and he come up with a crafty kind of way to, uh, to make Very these cool. in So as, the ten, as it pulls, these, uh, these guys get uh, you know, pulled together and they, they sort of pull it until the switch gets um, uh, triggered over there, so uh, combine cool that, that. Yeah, combine that with like some some lo some really affordable um, motor drivers. Uh, he's using relays uh, so that um, so that when uh, when the end triggers uh, start going, it knows when to stop. Uh, and he actually did this uh, in last week's uh, project update. He's using the, pretty much the exact same concept and the exact same circuit uh, to make it work. So here it is, all mounted into the arm. And just prototyping it, making sure that all the wires are nice and the length that they need to be. But uh, <clears throat> very cool update. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, 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 James is working on many different projects. Our uh, our our six Hulkbuster Alien Xenomorph project. A lot of different ones. Definitely check them out on YouTube if you haven't already. You can support his projects and more of his content by checking out his Patreon campaign. So already, very, awesome, very awesome work, James. We'll see you next week with more awesome stuff. 
Very cool. Okay, what's next up here? Next up Let's we have train? a US Western oh my goodness. Um, G scale train. This is a choo choo. Yeah, so. 3D printed choo choo. Choo choos are a big thing big, here in this house kids. with. Uh, I think your son Gavin is, is a choo choo holic. Yeah, he is totally obsessed Tell with choo choos. His, <laughs> his, his addiction with choo choos. <laughs> he just had his uh, second birthday, and of course, it was a completely choo choo themed you know, birthday party. Yeah. Like, down to the. All the sh food shapes were all in choo choo, like choo choo cake, freaking. The party favors are bandanas. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of different things. You actually 3D printed some wheels. Some oh yeah, for all wheels, the uh, all the, the box, for all the boxes of the, the, food. Uh, the food, yeah. So. Um, this guy, he made a whole choo choo. So there's this thing called um, Garden Railroad, and it's a whole, it's a whole like thing. It is, a, I didn't know it was a thing, but um, this guy made. Pedro, tell me about it. <laughs> like, look at this. Yeah. yeah so, so this is from. This is from Gordon uh, Johnson from Sweden. He it's is right um, there, Pedro. Uh, he's got Pedro. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, so he got a little background story. He first got his thingomatic, and then um, later upgraded to Rep Two, and sort of kept you know the tra tra the tradition alive of you know sort of this uh, train building right into the next century with you know three D printing. Oh yeah, you can do a lot, a lot here, down to just making things that you really couldn't uh, sort of manufacture. Um, so it's it's there's this thing called like the G scale, right? So that's the ratio of how the scale is supposed to be. So this is a 132 scale. Um, I was looking, I was actually looking at the Wikipedia for, for Garden Railway. And um, there's a whole science to it, man. It's crazy. Yeah, down um, to like the scenery, yeah. the way everything like is scaled and you know, right. constantly trimmed to keep, you know, sort of the scale with the, the models. Yeah, but as far as that. how it works and the electronics of it, it really is pretty simple. A DC motor yeah. with a warm gear drive and uh, it sort of drives two of these axes, right? With the warm gear, you can see it. And um, uh, different pieces of hardware to keep everything together. So things are ABS and PLA, mm -hmm. but um, I think uh, all the sort of handles and things that are, are, are brass rods. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. There's actually a video of it here. So let's go ahead and run that so that you guys can see the epicness of this train. So this is the first test run here. So much uh, sort of coloring and detail went into this one. So there it is running. Yeah, really, yeah full speed. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny though, because when we were growing up as a kid, um, one of the houses in our neighborhood had like this big, like, rideable train that went around oh, yeah. like the whole house. It was like it was the size sort of, of a mini go kart or something, but. Uh, yeah, like not giant, like not too small, like big enough for like a kid and like even the, the you know, adults that lived there, yeah. wouldn't, I would, we'd see them riding on it. It was so cool that it wasn't like all to the ground. It had like all these cool, it had like, hills and, stuff, like yeah. hills and stuff. It was all steel. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So seeing something like this, yeah, like, um, and if you go to the website too, um, a, lot, a lot of the things like the. Um, the light post back there, it's like all LED, it has like a scene at night where like all the lights are shining through, there's like passengers in there. Yeah, it's actually pretty astonishing. <laughs> so are you going to make one for Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it didn't look like it was maybe too many not. parts. Uh, maybe <laughs> so we're done printing all this stuff, yeah, we'll maybe. see. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, pieces that can be printed here. But uh, very cool project. Uh, you guys, very awesome uh, way to check keep. it out and take a verse. Yeah. That traditional live using right. 3D printing. Oh, Very yeah. Very cool. Get all the parts on his Thingiverse page. Okay. All right. Very cool. I think that's going to do it for this week's stories. Again, you can check out the blog for a lot more stories that weren't covered and you didn't have time to cover. That's right. You get all the coolness there every Thursday. Okay. And now we're going to take a look at Shop Talk. This is where we talk a little bit about uh, some new stuff in 3D printing. Uh, this week we have an update to simplify 3D. Yeah, so they <laughs> release or they released on Tuesday um, version 3.0 of their very popular slicing software. Uh, we talked about this a lot. We've been um, using it for a good what one two years or something. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So and, um, uh, we the recommend best feature, yeah, is the support material. How you're able to um, add that uh, customizably like that. So um, one of the uh, Go ahead and show off one of the first things, which okay. is the ability to have the support types go just on the bed or um, have the ability to go onto the model as well. So if we just zoom up here and we can see what the old style was. 
let's see here the drop down it's normal and then from build plate only so you can see the normal one um, would uh, produce um, support material on the model as well new one will only let it do it to the um, platform if you wish okay comes quite handy with um, uh, when you know you don't need support material on um, on something that's part of your um, your model uh, another way uh, another update is the way that they're handling the profiles now they um, let you save one locally and they have one where you can pull off of the the cloud now too so you can um, oh, so sort it's of tied to your profile so you, yeah, so you yeah. Can, your account rather you have different mm -hmm. profiles yeah so they have like sort of like a back end now um, that you can a little dashboard a little dashboard on the, um, ah, on, on the okay. site you can see where all the profiles live now okay that's a pretty cool way to do that and uh, let's see let's see more stuff in here uh, if we go ahead and check out the I think inside the additions is uh, where we can see some new stuff here for multi um, for dual printing, they have a ooze shield, um, which is uh, comes in very handy for doing like um, the metal printing. This is the the technique that, we're, that we couldn't talk about last week. Sure. What it's doing is doing like a vertical shield um, to get like the the hot spot away from the little detailed points, like um, like the neck and the chin right here, where it gets like really small and it has to keep printing. Um, so when we were printing before, we were having a ton of overhang, and then you know perfect timing that they you know let us uh, try out the beta before it came out we we're able to test out the ooze shield so this is what it looks like it just does like a circular one it has three different types that we'll uh, look into in a little bit but i just use the vertical one they have a water uh, fall and a contour one so the the reason why this helps is because it takes the nozzle away from the little small parts in here allows it to cool a little bit more longer while it's building the little um, shield around it so it moves that you know sort of hot zone away from you know, the little small parts will, which would usually, you know, melt it and sort of swash it around as, it's pr as it continues printing. So it's a very handy little feature there for, you know, wow. printing little small detailed parts like that. Because this is only like 60 millimeters tall, you know, it's not very big and it's got a lot of detail in it. Okay. And we're able to preserve a lot of that by uh, directing the heat away from that. Uh, yeah. By using the um, the ooze shield. Now, I remember you you had mm -hmm. something similar where you would make a sort of duplicate a throwaway part where one would take all the goobers and it's, zits. Yeah, and this then, is what you optimize. Yeah, you it's do a lot it. more optimized because it's just one perimeter, right? Just mm -hmm. going tall ways. Yeah. And there's I guess different shapes about it. What does it show here? Yeah, if we go back here, we have vertical, which is what I used here. They have a waterfall in a contour, okay. which sort of like just um, goes along the shape of the uh, which your one, model. Did you find anyone better over the other? Uh, I. Mostly because um, I wanted to completely direct the heat completely away from it. These would make it a little bit more closer because they're mm. following the path That's of right. it. Yeah. This is like, you know, just a circle. So it has um, more time to get away from it, more time to cool it. The yeah. fan hits the, you know, the small detail parts to okay. cool it down more. Now, how about like the offset? So if, if obviously if you add more offset, it's going to take longer to print, but... Yeah, it's so you can definitely adjust that, yeah. And then they have another option there to use a uh, priming pillar. So if you wanted to completely take it away, um, like have it go all the way to a corner and like just oh, print okay. a little pillar up. That is cool. Um, that's a, a different way you can do it too. Okay. Um, so not just for dual extrusion, but for mm -hmm. very small detailed sort of mechanic type parts. Yeah. Okay. okay, next up we're gonna be looking at the infill tab. They have now the ability to split up your inner and external infill patterns. Oh, yeah. You now have um, five additional um, infill. Before oh, all cool. we had was rectilinear. Now we have grid, triangular, wiggle, wiggle. Fast, <laughs> fast honeycomb, and full honeycomb. Honeycombs, wow. Uh, so okay. for, um, I think the LED ones, you tried the triangular one. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, it almost looked like a spider web that was going inside there. Yeah. So you get all these cross sections and stuff. And then oh, I think no. the full honeycomb is um, was a different one you tried. Yeah, it didn't work out so well. I got like, a little. It depends on your. On the top um, of the head, yeah. It just depends on the model. Right. And then if we move on yeah. to the. I really uh, like the external infill pattern a bit more. Um, still waiting on Kitty Cat infill. Kitty <laughs> cat. I think somebody did that. But uh, as far as external, uh, you get the concentric now. Yeah. So concentric is pretty good for doing like the um, all the bases here. Sure. So you can um, you won't. And the top, have the, like, like the top. Yeah, you won't have it go back Cappy's and forth. Head. Yeah, yeah. His head right there would be nice and cylindrical. Yep, yep. Okay, so you know that's a it's a good welcome addition. What else do we have? 
Glitches? See, a little glitch there. Do we have glitches, um, but we had some fixes, right? Like the Wacom yeah, tab. So Tell me about the Wacom tablets. The tab Wacom tablets before weren't compatible. Like you would just hover over it with your pen and it would just start zooming in and like Flip changing over there. Yeah. All right. That's a little bit more better now, but there's just a couple little UI bugs that All you right. just saw there okay. with it uh, flipping through some of the tabs, um, but definitely more usable now. All right, very good. So uh, I think something interesting in the other tab here, in, a, in addition to having your diameter and filament prices, you can also set your filament density too. Oh, this is, a, kind of this makes is sense. a direct like this is for like the metal filaments. Metal filaments. Yeah, because they they, are, they, they're they heavy. weigh <laughs> yeah they weigh they're more. They're heavy. It's metal, so you can uh, okay. adjust your prices um, accordingly um, based on okay. your, the, your, That's great. So your filament density. With, 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 you know, hundred dollars worth of prints right here because yeah. it's a little bit heavier. And right, well, then good. a very big one inside the advanced tab, um, they combated a way to sort of get rid of like zits and um, sort of like the blobs that can appear on the outer shell of uh, models by having it avoid crosshair outlines um, for travel movements. Okay, so you get a factor. Okay, it's movement behavior. Yeah, yeah. so it's basically just staying away from any of the open um, sort of pot spots where um, you would have like retraction issues and like little bits of um, like hairs and things like that. Okay, so it helped you out on the kitty cat? Yeah. Um, one little bug here too, um, if we go ahead and build this, uh, they have a bunch of key commands now so you can just uh, oh, command cool. E and we'll um, jump you into that. that. But what I, I don't like that. is that it's uh, like selecting all of your um, processes there which yeah. is uh, none were selected or the one that you're currently selecting just like the last behavior from yeah. the last version. Okay. So if we go ahead and build this, now we have a new um, preview visualizer. Modes. Yeah, you have a new feature type um, coloring, so you could see like the differences between like the U shield or like your skirts or your um, infill, or uh, in fill. addition There's to being able to there. see like the movement speed. Yeah. So a very cool new uh, visualization there, and of yeah. course, if like the shield is um, like legend covering, right? you can um, turn on the uh, cross section view, so you can see you know. Make sure nothing is overhanging or you know um, ran into anything there. Yeah, any overhanging stuff that you might not see. Yeah, yeah. so you can like look underneath there. Okay. And still see the rest of your model by using the cross view. Um, they added it, about like 40 different features. Uh, there were just some of the ones that I um, right away noticed um, that were the most useful for the project that we were working on at the time. But definitely check it out. Um, again, this is what I was talking about here, where uh, especially for the little parts like the, the neck and the the little ears there for um, MOSFET. Um, these were able to print without being melted because we were mm -hmm. able to direct the heat away by using the um, the U shield. Cool. So definitely uh, were the upgrade there. If you guys haven't checked it out before, definitely um, check that out. Okay, that's Fusion Three. <laughs> that's Simplified Three D. That's why our code is, is this right here. <laughs> Fusion Five Three D. We're all can... jumbled up. Uh, but you can get 10% off your order if you want to pick up some uh, filament or right. some 3D printing accessories or some electronics. So it expires yeah. at 11.59 p.m. tonight. doesn't work on um, gift certificates or software. Alrighty. Okay. Well, next up, we're going to continue with Shop Talk and do some answers. This is where we answer your YouTube questions. So let's take a look at the first YouTube question. This one is from... Vitanis Nicolonis. <laughs> um, this is uh, regarding the uh, Super Game Pi uh, project, the Raspberry Pi project. I would love to make this, but I can't because I don't have a 3D printer near me. I'm so sad because this Raspberry Pi console is the best Raspberry Pi console, and I want it, but I can't have it. So maybe you guys can sell those cases. Please, it would be awesome if you would do it. Then I could make this console. We've had a couple of people always ask, like, you know, can we sell? Can we manufacture? Can we injection mold? These? No, no, we we're cannot. not allowed to because we don't want to get sued from Nintendo. <laughs> now we're both corporations, and maybe our visions don't align, but we don't want to be liable for for that. It's it's, it's just a, a lawsuit waiting to happen if we do that. Yeah, so definitely check out a makerspace or a library. Um, oh yeah. 3D hubs. 3D hubs. Um, yeah, just Not, check around the yeah. any makerspace in, in the area. You never know. You might, you know. You might get be a, surprised. You might get a job or something. You just show up there with so much enthusiasm. So yeah. if you get that job, let us know. So, you know, you're welcome. And <laughs> okay. But good question. People always asking, you know, I don't I can't I don't have a 3D printer. Well, definitely check out your makerspaces and support your local makers. Okay. Yeah. 
Next up, this one's from Brian Parma. Hey, have you guys looked at Onshape? It has a free plan for hobbyists and makers, and unlike Fusion and 123D, it can be used from Linux. Uh-oh, we got a Linux, folks. Okay, well, uh, I'm glad you have asked. I've actually been checking out. Um, it was a private beta. It kind of is a public beta now. You can sign up for free. This is what it looks like, folks. Um, you get presented with a bunch of tutorials. You got a bunch of stuff started here, a bunch of uh, uh, samples. And really, I've sort of tested it, right? I've been testing it, and I had I uploaded, I imported a 123D design. So those files that are on GitHub, I downloaded one of the one to the 123D design files, and I imported it. And this is what happened. It is, of course, a solid modeling app, and it is amazing that it even did something. Like this is great. This is a, of course, this was a um, a SAT file. Maybe a step file would be a little bit better. But you do have the breakdown of the, all the of all the bodies and the layers that are here, so that is nice. You do get this um, this uh, this layer panel here, and you have all the tools that you're familiar with in one two three D. You get them up there. So uh, and even some new ones like uh, Draft, which makes you do custom angles. It has Shell, which is a huge deal, and of course it has the power ones like uh, uh, Sweeping and Loft and Revolve. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, you also have split solid and transform stuff. Uh, I have yet to play around with it um, to create parts, but I did just want to see what would happen if, um, if I imported something. Um, so that's really cool. You got, uh, like, I think they have project sketch. That's awesome. Uh, and the it looks like they have a helix tool, so just doing threading and stuff. That is really cool. And it has uh, sort of a mate controller, which is uh, if you're doing assembly, assembly yeah, yeah, snaps and joints. That is a huge deal. So, folks, if you want to look for something that's going to work in your browser, it's going to work in uh, Linux, uh, check out Onshape. Uh, you can get a free account right now. Yeah, let us know if the um, step files work. We'll um, yeah. save step files out so you guys can open those up anywhere. Yeah. It looks like collaboration and um, sort of versioning is built into as well. So yeah, I saw that there's different versions awesome. there. Glad to Super see cool. web-based CAD it's, it's programs like one, continue. Two, yeah, it's like 123D and Tinkercad yeah. like joined together or something. So definitely check that out, folks. I think this is going to be pretty cool. Very okay. Awesome. Well, that's going to be it for our shop talk. Shop talk. I think that's it for the show for this week. Whew. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> for joining. Yeah. We want to leave you guys off with, of course, some links. Check out the guides on the Adafruit Learning System to learn more about Arduino, DIY Electronics, wearables, and 3D printing. Don't forget Raspberry All Pi. The <laughs> this week's episode is the, the um, Bretto. Bretto little mini Raspberry Pi A lot laptop. of you folks like it. A lot. It's been downloaded quite a few times. If you make it, please go ahead and post it on uh, the Thingiverse page as a make, and we will share it on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is very cool. And if you want to share your projects, you totally can. We have a show and tell. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, where else can people find us, Pedro? Check us out on theplus.google.com and also join the show and tell every um, Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. We're there every day, every week. Every showing. day. <laughs> every day we're there. <laughs> yeah. Showing, uh, you know, the latest, uh, you know, behind the scenes of whatever we're working on. Yeah. And Very cool way to Yeah. Yeah. 3D Thursday is um, 3D... It is on the vlog three Thursday every <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, don't worry, we're, we're gonna get through this. Yeah, remote posts that we posts that we didn't have time to cover on the show. Folks, be sure to check out the full lineup of shows. It starts off. We start the week off with Wearable Wednesdays on a Wednesday. This is the live longest running wearable electronic show with Becky Stern doing a lot of cool crafty projects combining crafts and electronics. Followed by that is where we talk about the show and tell every Wednesday. At 7:30 p.m. ET Eastern Time. Bring your electronic projects, Bring your, your 3D printed projects, your retro gear, your 3D printed goodies. Share with us your projects. We want to see you guys. That's where we are. That's where you can see Lamar and Phil. And after that, followed by that, is Ask an Engineer with Lady Ada, Mr. Lady Ada, Phil Tyrone. All the latest Answering news. Answering your questions, latest news in open source hardware, electronics, new products. So much an hour pack jam full of awesomeness. Be sure to check it out every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I think that's it for the show, man. Yeah. Um, Don't we're forget go, to follow us. We're going to go get some All the various <laughs> social networks for all behind the scenes and all the other stuff. Okay. And we'll see then, you guys next week. Next week, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And until then, keep on making. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>